So, Tom, walk me through this from your perspective. Moose is going to chime in for the simisms. Okay, so first of all, you want to establish, well, if you want, I'll get my checklist and I'll walk you through it just like the checklist says. I would say for today's purposes that we... Let's let's do the fast way then, okay? I was going to say, because there's a lot of things that by default are already in the place that the checklist would be. One day I would like to do, do like comprehensive line by line exactly, but when someone says, oh, check that the gear's down, I don't want to check that the gear's down in the simulator right now. Gotcha. Let's put it that way. <laughs> All right, so we got to establish power first. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So either you're going to have the guys plug in your external power, and you need two external powers of the three to get the systems running properly. Okay. One external power is not enough. It'll, it'll power the airplane. You could probably start the APU with it, but uh, you need uh, you like need two power. jetway plugs or two GPUs. Okay. Exactly. So okay. Uh, if you want, you can do a cold and dark from the uh, from the from the uh, with the APU. If you... Yeah, let's do APU. Um, All right. So so up up above you go. Overhead panel. I'm assuming that we don't have an APU connected already. Or sorry, a GPU. No, it, no, no do GPU. A, do it from a menu. Okay, click show me that, button. Moose. Just let's take a quick let's do click, GPU. Let's do GPU. Click on the center click on the center pillar. Okay, the center pillar. The pedestal? The no, 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 no the no, pillar the, between the, the panes the pillar of glass. Between the panes of glass, yeah. Between the captain and co pilot's windshield. Oh. The center pillar. Click on there's that? A, there's a click spot right there. There you go. I see you have uh, external power, wheel chocks, door commands. So if you click on external power, it'll it'll connect it. So you just do it real quick to see what it does, but then you can turn it back off. It went away. You click the X. You gotta click the pillar again. <laughs> so when you say pillar, I accidentally did it before. A okay, big so... gray area between the oh, the the panel. Go ahead, go back up on your tilt. Tilt uh, up. Move your head up. The thing you that connects that? your lower panel to your upper panel, that gray thing between the glass, the window, the windshield. Bef oh. Yeah, you're, Go you're straight far, up with your mouse. You're too far down. You're looking, you're getting colder. <laughs> <laughs> right here. You're going ab above Sorry. that. Warm, right there. There, there oh, you go. Right. Bingo. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So easy to describe when we're looking at it, you know. Exter right? <laughs> external power. There so, you yes. go. So that gets the external power, and then you could connect the switches correctly in the overhead panel if you want to do it via external power. We're going to do it by APU, so you can just you can turn that off and ignore it. But all right, let's just, we'll start on an external power. Go ahead, Tom. Okay, so go to your overhead panel. Okay, and you see in the electrical panel there, about the middle and the le and the left, it says available available for your forward external power. Yep. So turn those on. And aft as well? Uh, you don't yep. have it. Okay. You don't have it in the aft. Just the two forwards. Okay. I don't think the aft is modeled in the uh, quality wings. Okay. Yeah, and I'll tell you, I've, on, I've never, I've only seen it plug, all three plugged in once. Uh, so that's very rare that they ever do that. But anyway, now what you got to do is turn on your Whoops, you cut off there. Turn off your what? One second. No problem. Turn on your battery switch. I got to I gotta do a quick, uh, dis you know, just one second. Coordinating some, a visitation from my kiddos. One second. Sure. I love in chat when things get spelled wrong accidentally, but it ends up making new words that sound fun, like wind shelf. <laughs> you should see my typing. It's so bad. I even type dyslexically. Oh, gosh. I've done that with uh, setting frequencies. When uh, Vatsim tells me a frequency, I'll, like, I'll flip two of the letters and the numbers in my head, and I'm going, why can't they hear me? Oh, yeah. What's kind of neat is when you uh, when you do this too is you can go down and pull the electrical schematic up 
I don't know how much of it they have modeled, but it's really cool to see what's load shed with these. Oh, yeah. As you start doing this stuff, it's really fun in the real airplane to do. Yeah, see, I'm I'm much I'm I'm way into the systems on these things, so I love when every when as many buttons that work and actually fail things and oh yeah, and they're not working. I, I love all that stuff. I just geek out on that all day. Okay, so battery on. Yep, same panel. There you go. Turn your battery on. Okay, now what you would want to do at this point is uh, you can do a fire warning test. So um, let's bypass that. That's part. Okay, we'll bypass fire warning test because, uh, and then what you could do is um, go ahead and go to on for. Normally, we go to on for one minute to give time for the doors to let me, sequence. Let me let me back up for a go second. Ahead. Mustafa and others, would you like to see the fire test action from the seven eight seven pilot perspective? To me, I, I don't like do a fire test in the sim, but maybe we want to see this. For, for if it was me, if it was me, I like walking through the whole thing because okay. I, I I simulated. On I my apologize, channel. Tom. Let's do the fire test. <laughs> I don't want to check the gear, but I want to do the fire <laughs> test. <laughs> yeah, the spoilers, the flaps, the gear. Forget all that stuff. All right, you know. Who needs them? <laughs> okay. Who needs them? So, uh, fire warning test. Oh my gosh, this is so funny, you guys. You're gonna laugh at me, but uh, it's right there. I, see the AP fire handle by the cargo fire? Do you see it? I do. Upper right of the seam. So, John, your mouse. There you go. Okay. So there's your. It says fire overheat test. Go ahead and hit that. There's a black button right next to the fire handle. Okay, yeah, the APU light comes up forward and aft on the cargo fire. Yep, and of course, down by your uh, throttle quadrant, you would see the, uh, also you would see the uh, fire handles light up, and you would also see the, on your ICAS, you would get the red fire APU, and left and right fire warnings would light up as well. It's a pity that we can't, yeah, I see it, fire test, test pass. Yep, okay. Yep. There you go. Okay. So, of course, you always do that. Make sure your APU fire warning system is working because you start the APU. You don't want it to catch on fire and have no way of knowing that it is on fire. So now go ahead. You can start the APU now. You've got an external power. You can actually power up your IRSs now if you'd like. Um, Would that be the left in, and right in any yep, particular so order? Doesn't matter. Just turn them on. Okay. Actually, the left is almost always the correct order on these. So. Okay. Okay, and then uh, just coming down the panel, let's see, you're good. Uh, you're good on the buses there. Then you come over to the battery. All that looks good. Um, just going down, turn your window heat. Okay, window heat is going to be... It's in a different place than the 7.3, isn't it? It's uh, You're looking almost straight at it right now. It's just below the emergency lights. Uh, okay, so switch. window heat, so all the backup and primary. There you go. You turn it all on. It looks like the backup. Okay, there we go. Yep, they're all yeah, on. I, yeah, there you go. Emergency exit lights? We usually do that. You can do it now. We usually do it in the before takeoff, uh, just before on our before takeoff checklist. Let's but, do it then. Uh, yeah, that's how we do it. In fact, that's one of part of the captain's flow is we do it then. Okay. Um, okay. And then uh, you don't have to turn on your hydraulics. We don't have to do any of that right now. You can go down to, uh, let me see, your cargo fires are all good. Yeah, it's all good. Your crop fuel looks good. You don't have to do anything there. If you notice, uh, on your fuel pump switches, mm -hmm. see where it says fuel jettison? What you'll find is when you start the APU, you don't even have to turn the pump on, but the pressure light will go off on the, I believe it's the forward left side that powers the APU. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to physically turn the pump on until the before start checklist. Okay. Okay, and then over to the far right side on the overhead panel. So you want to go up, far right side, there you go. Okay, you want to make sure your humidity switch is on. Okay. And your bulk heat is on. And uh, they don't have P 
PCA hooked up, which is preconditioned air. So I'd go ahead and turn on your equipment cooling switches. Uh, to and recirc fans or to auto and your recirc fans. Okay. Now, if you had the PCA hooked up, you would have the. I think it's the lower one shut off, but in the sim, it really doesn't matter. Same <laughs> You're thing talking about the like the air cart, trim. you mean? Is that what the PCA? Yeah, is? the air, okay. the air cart. Not the air cart to start the engine, but to air condition the airplane. Oh, the, oh okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The LP, not the high P. The HP. Yeah. So then turn on your packs and your trim air. Packs on. Trim air on. All right. One last text message to dispatch. Company is just talking to me. Yeah, no problem. Con one second. As Max would say, company is pissed. <laughs> Yeah, my 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 kids are learning that word from from watching these live streams. It looks like uh, iOS Scotsman just tested. He can load the seven eight cold and dark without doing the procedure. He must have changed it in the uh, set configs. Yeah, it must have. Oh oh, is there an, like an update or? No no, it it's you have to go into the config file and change the. That's uh, the stuff we were cold talking. Oh oh, the yeah. one he the one we talked about. You can okay cool. Thank you, Iowa. The one that you don't care about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The one I don't care about. Exactly. The one that... Okay, come on down to your pressurization panel. Okay, pressurization panel. I'm still getting used yeah, to right Chase below. Plane. It's such a strange... Turn on your outflow valves. Animal. Outflow flow forward and aft. Yep. That uh, guarded ventilation switch that says alternate right now, right above there, Tom, is mm -hmm. that something we need to do now or we wait for later? Go ahead and turn it on. I, 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 be honest with you, I'd have to, without the checklist, that I have to look. Gotcha. We never mess with it. It's not even modeled. No, but, it's a, okay. it's, it's a guard. Oh, it's a right click. Of... Yeah. yeah. Right click, Brett Sand. Okay. There you go. There you go. That's what you want. Normal. I don't know why in a cold and dark they put it to alternate. You would never do that. Yeah, the guarded that switches. Kind of guarded hey, is this, switches. Is this the whole by? Is this the whole part of the isolate ventilate situation that they have on the seven three? Is that what yeah, that button's is. for? Okay. It uh, that's the idea behind it. Okay. But the other thing is, again, with a guarded switch, you don't mess with guarded switches mm. unless you have to buy a checklist. Oh, okay. That's by by a an ab, a non normal checklist. Okay. But anyway. All right. So. Uh, Coming down, uh, okay, your wipers are good, your beacon's on, I'd turn that off. See, you wouldn't have that on. Um, it should be off by default. Turn your navs on. Navs on, beacons off? Yep. Exactly. Oh, I normally have my beacon on prior to engine start. Prior well, to engine start, yeah. yes, you would. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So we just, all right, we simmers, hot rush things. <laughs> right, cause you know, you know what the beacon's telling people? It's telling the ground workers on the ground, get the yeah. heck away from the airplane unless you're one of the wing walkers, because mm. this thing's going to be under power soon, okay. and you're supposed to, all the trucks, all the vehicles are never to approach the airplane when the beacon's on, Yeah. which, by the way, happened to me as a Super 80 co-pilot, and that guy taxied just right over a parked fuel truck. Oh. Yeah, oh. Did quite a bit of damage. We had stopped. To have them move some equipment because it was in this, it was a, a pickup truck was over, well over the safety line, the sterile area in, yeah. the, in the ramp. This was in Chicago. Yeah. And we stopped the airplane, motioned to the guy to move it. He, he very hesitatingly did so, came back in, started motioning us forward. And all of a sudden, the whole airplane just started. We moved about five, 10 feet, and the whole airplane jerked. Wow. And, um, and we ran over a fuel truck. The fuel truck pulled up to the front of the wing to fuel the MD-80. He was not supposed to do that because the beacon was still on. But he thought we were parked. And, uh, yeah, so two guys didn't do their job. The wing walker and the fueler. So did quite a bit of damage to the airplane, by the way. Yuck. Beacon on. We're about to blow you away. Okay. Get out. Exactly. Okay. Don't don't come near the airplane until the beacon's off. All right. So um, let's go ahead down to the uh, – at this point in time, you'd go down to your oxygen and you'd chest your mask. Okay. Uh, and that kind of stuff. Turn on the EFB if you want. 
all this stuff over which here. Which it's already on, but yeah. you test, do a mask and calm and mask check. Okay. Pardon me. And then uh, you can start firing up. Uh, you can start uh, looking at your flight mode panel. So we got, uh, you mean the MCP? Is it, I guess yeah, the, what I refer to. Yeah, it? yeah. MCP okay. mode control panel. You're right. It's known by many things, but it is actually the MCP. And you'd want to start right from the left, working your way all the way across. So your mins there on your barrow and and uh, for radio and for barrow, you'd want to set barrow. Okay, I'm gonna set. You know what? I'm gonna get. I'm gonna use chase plane here and just change this angle because I do not like this. There, uh, no, that's the wrong way. If it was X plane, we'd be done by now with this process. But come up, come I up. I just got chase plane and I'm not at all comfortable. It, it, <laughs> it, it, it. I got a line on my graphics on the windshield. That's weird. Yeah, I'm seeing that. I don't know what that is. That's weird. It's weird. Oh, you know what? Is it your it looks like it's the window of the terminal. You're actually. Oh, I could be too far forward. That's fine. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. All right. It's so. Like... All right. So I'm gonna make this. Okay, that's a little bit better, like straight on to the MCP. Let me update my preset because Chase Plane is, it's a new animal for me. X planers. <laughs> uh, what airport are you at? Just out of curiosity. Uh, Salt Lake. I figured. <laughs> <laughs> When in doubt, you go home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do I not have? Oh yeah, instrument. Uh, let's try this. Update preset. Okay, four, five. Okay, now I'm gonna scroll over, and we're gonna zoom into the EFIS panel, and we're gonna go to. You said uh, go to. Barrel. So, yep. Click that to barrel. All right. Now, because what we're going to do is we're you, now we would get this off of our performance plan, but you're going to set in your engine out acceleration altitude. And let's just say for simple purposes, just set it to um, just set it to 800 feet above the field elevate. Now, in Salt Lake, it would be very Five. different because of the mountains. OK, so uh, I'm going to set the. Oh, I changed from barrel to radio. Hold on. There we go. Now I need to get the. It takes a while to scroll up to that. Uh, it's going to yeah, take sometimes forever. Sometimes I use my middle, uh, my middle thing. I know this is really slow. It drives me crazy. In the real airplane, it's super fast. Oh, you can hold it down. Okay, it's still slow, but you can hold it down. So I'm holding down the right click on the outer gotcha. part and it just so happens that it, you said how many how many feet above sea level so, feet so or 800 we're, feet pardon me above your so we're gonna have to go elevation. to like five thousand feet <laughs> yeah hey d money yeah which is why it's nice to save panel states in high altitude airports yeah i wonder if plane command could set this that would be interesting uh this is no, because as soon as you said, what would this be considered? It's not the barrow. It's it's minimums. Um, I'm going to have to look that up and see it, because I might be able to do a voice command where plane command will tell it to put in this. All right, I put in 5150. That's close enough. Okay. Hey, okay. Brett Sand, right-click, man. <sighs> okay, so then uh, you want to turn on your FPV, which is your flight path vector. It's not required, but I always use it. Why not see where the airplanes head? Okay, flight plan vector. Okay, yeah, very cool. Flight path. Flight path. Flight path vector. All right. Yeah, you see the little circle that just popped up between the I do, the, the little dot? target. Yeah. You got it. That's what you and That's where the, not where the plane needs to go, but that's what where the plane's going. That's right. That will show you the path of the aircraft relative to your altitude. Uh, so you'll see, that's how you can tell what your angle of attack is actually. Mm. And uh, and also, uh, you know, if you have a real bad crosswind, it's going to be over left or right of the primary flight display. Mm. And then, of course, Barrow said you'd check your inches and H, 
you know, you're in inches, set your altimeter. I just hit B. It's easy, right? Yep. B is set. Oh, it's oh two nine nine or two. What the snack? Do I've got have, uh, I got a raunch the sky active on? sky because <laughs> we say. need our real world weather coming in right now. This makes you, you know, want to. Really funny though, if it does, if you boot this up and it actually is real world two nine nine or two right now, it's all that would be kind of funny actually. Let's see what it is. Here we go. Three zero two four. Um, Virus City that wants it, this one. This is one him. To, this is making him want to set up his P three D and get this plane. Yeah. Iowa yes, Scotsman says it didn't work the next time he did it. So. Oh well. Ooh, okay. Interesting. Okay. Continuing on. Bar barrel set or altimeter okay, set. Bring your range down. I because you're going to be taxing the airplane. Take your range all the way down to point two five. Uh, as far low as it'll go, okay. so you can 0. see. Point two five. I don't. There you go. Oh. It's actually a half a mile, but that's what you see at the halfway point, right? Yeah. I okay, don't actually then, see any taxiways on here. I probably won't, but in the real world, you would. You would. It, it You can actually add that yourself. There's a way to do it. It's in the manual. But okay. anyway. Okay. Okay. So um, since they don't have the airport in there, coded in there, go ahead and set it to like 10 or 20 miles, whatever you have come. I like 10. There you go. Okay. D Money's his wife is going to kill him and be real upset if he gets into this whole P3D thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I read it wrong. I read it wrong. He retracted his last statement. In the end, it works. Okay, that's all we need to know. All right, continue. Cool. That Wisconsin is just confusing us. <laughs> no, I, 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 when he said I retract, I thought immediately. So oh, I it's see. all, it's all good. Continue. Okay, and then uh, what I like to do, just this technique, okay? As a captain, I kind of like to have the ICAS up on my side for now. Mm -hmm. But once I get started the doing the before taxi or before uh, startup checklist, before mm -hmm. pushback checklist, mm -hmm. I will hit that ICAST button, and, and I will give it to him. Have the big yeah, and give it to him, uh, and then who's ever it's kind of a little push button exercise. But then who's ever leg it is, I give that I give my co-pilot the choice. Some guys like to have the big picture. Some guys like to have the small picture on the nav display. So anyway. Whatever you're comfortable with there. Turn go ahead and continue to the right, turn on your auto throttle. Give me an example of what you're talking about. Is it when I hit this push. ICAST button here? Yeah. What push shifts? it right now. Okay. Push it. Watch. Oh, okay. So that this is this is There you go. Okay. Some people want the big picture and some people don't. And the vice Okay. All right. All right. Great. We got some context there. Hello, Mr. Horgie. Once you align the IRS, the map should come up at point two five, like he said. I haven't even put in a reference airport. Maybe it needs that. So. Yeah, it probably does need that to finish aligning. Okay. Yeah, you can go down to that right now, and uh, and it'll should align right away because it takes six minutes, and we've been doing that for that long. Okay, so should I go to position then? Go to init ref. Oh, init ref. Okay, init ref, and then um... <laughs> it should usually comes up like that, like the ident. And then it's usually, you know, anyway, yeah, just go to your next, uh, you can go to your root if you want or position. Okay, root. All right, here, let's put this. We're, we're just going to do a practice approach. So KSLC uh, is going to be the origin, and then KSLC is going to be the destination. Right. Now, one thing that's kind of neat about the 7 8 is it already knows when you align. It knows where you were last, and it it pretty well takes that position. So unless the airplane was, unless an FMC towed, was actually towed to like Bismarck or the airplane, would, yeah, exactly, towed <laughs> to Bismarck, it wouldn't be an issue. Yeah, hello, hello, Phil, welcome from Sweden. Offsked descent is here, real world seven three seven driver right there. I do get a lot of professional help. <laughs> hey, Offsked. <laughs> yep, I do, I do indeed. Okay, so uh, should I put in a, a uh, you know what, give me just for the visuals because if I don't change this view right now, I'm gonna, it's gonna drive me up the wall. So again, I'm going into, ch and I'm here, here for you guys learning chase plane. All I'm doing is I'm going into camera and controls and I'm just figuring out what I like with regard to tilt. Uh, and I really, for some reason, I just really like a straight down look 
And I wish you could reset. Can you reset the pan to zero? You can, huh? Yeah. Well, and you can click on it. Yeah, you can type in whatever you want. But... Yeah, so I'm going to go right. Uh, I think that looks good. So and then I'm going to go to preset, and I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to update the preset position by right clicking on that. And then that saves that, uh, that camera view. Okay. Cool. Okay. Now don't put the runway in here. That's a big no, no in a seven, eight. Okay. It's seven, three. You can do it and it works fine, but you don't do it. I can't, I I'd have to look up in the book. Why, but you'll do that through your departure arrival page. Okay. Okay. Flight number. Throw in a flight number. All right, we are Global Sim Alliance. Wait, I didn't get the. It didn't get the G. G. S. A. Five seventy two. Boom. Okay. Yeah, just be aware that is a simism in this plane. If you try to type too quickly or double type a number, it often misses it. So just be okay. aware. Just go go slow when you're typing on this one. Perfect. Is this model close to the avionics setup he flies? If so, I have plain envy. I don't think this is close. It... Uh, what you're looking at right there looks just like it. Visually, but maybe not behind the scenes. I don't know. I've heard... I don't know. Some of the things don't don't work right don't, Okay, so FMC, some of the things don't but... work, but okay. That's, that says something. I like that. Okay. Okay, so uh, since you're on that page, if you want to just load up uh, any route you want, go to the departure arrival page. Okay. Let me get a METAR for Salt Lake City. It is. Winds are 110 at, at uh, 4, so any runway. But we'll go... Uh, um, oh, let's do the... Let's, let's take off to the south, and we'll do the Weavik. I think that's one in here. Uh, let's do. Uh, how do you do next page? Next page. There we go. Oh, they've taken out. They've taken out the we no. the weevic. Yeah, there you go. Hmm. All right. Let me just. Let me just. Uh, we're gonna simulate what they would do for um, just a quick Vegas flight from here. Imagine if a seven eight seven flew from Salt Lake to City to Vegas. Man, that'd be cool. But it doesn't exist. Uh, but I'm going to say, you know, it's a southwest departure. It could be going to, you know, Los Angeles or whatever. Zion's one is the most popular today. So we're going to click on Zion's one right there. Boom. And we're going to be taking off. Uh, Delta usually takes off. A lot of the Delta take off on the right side. So one six right. And then we're going to be doing, heck, we'll even put in a transition. The meeker transition. And then... Um, and that's it. And then, do I can I go back and do my arrival now, or do I hit root? Uh, I it, did you you put the runway in? So go ahead and hit. Root. Okay, root. All right. Should I put the arrival in before activating, or does that matter? Uh are you going? Is that it? The, I'm just going back to Salt Lake. That, After my transition, I'm going to come back to Salt Lake. So. Then what I would do is I would just act. Activate. And don't normally put it. Don't you would put, in, put a, in. Normally, you'd put your root in. You'd go to the root page, put the rest of your root in. Okay, so like the. Um, yeah. right, page I do have. I do have a root. We're page. direct. You know, Zion's Meeker. Um, exactly, but you'd continue it from Meeker. Yeah. And uh, you know, put in the rest of what you. I'll need tell you to, what. I will put in a. Uh, I will put in. Let's just simulate. We're going to Fairfield VOR. So would I type in just FFU and put it here on the uh, right side? You got it. You got it. Okay. So then just we... like the 7-3. Okay. And then we're going to execute that. All right. Very good. That's good. Now, as far as fuel is concerned, where do we load fuel in the sim from the EFB or? Yes. EFB, yeah. Yeah, okay. it's really great. They've vastly improved. The, go, go to the EFB. I don't know if you want to do that now, but I was just thinking we don't need a huge amount of fuel for this test. No, heck no, you don't. <laughs> no, you'll need very little fuel for this. <laughs> this is cool, Virus City. I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. So, tell you what, so we don't get lost on the pre flight. Let's go back to the flight mode panel and we'll come back down to that. Um, you... Oh, I have. I think I have runway now. Sorry. Yeah, you do. Bring it all the way down. So yeah, got, baby. Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, baby. 
Thank you, Kithrick, for making me notice that. I think you're still in voice, aren't you? You're just, yes, sir. just listening. Very good. I like it. He likes to sit back and listen to the master, Tom and Moose. I'll tell you, I'll put a picture in uh, Discord in a little bit, and it will show you. Uh, we, you're all the way down, right? To to, are you to five miles? Go down one more. Click on you. Uh, I'll go down one more here. I can't tell what my range is when I'm zoomed in so close. Here, hold on. There's two point five. There's one. There's five. See, and there's. If you look right below map, the green map, there's your actual range. And then the halfway part, there you go. Okay, cool. That's that's looking pretty pretty good. That's looking. That tells me exactly what gate I'm. That it, in fact, you know what that tells me? I'm zoomed in so far. It looks like I need a tissue to wipe the thing that's hanging down from my nostril. I can see myself in that in that display. <laughs> TMI, right. John. TMI. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So let's go back to the flight mode panel. Uh, you need to turn your auto throttles on and your flight direct. So when you say turn them on, you want me to arm them? Yeah, they're armed, exactly. Sorry, okay. arm your thro auto throttle. Okay. And turn on your flight director. And turn on Correct. the flight director, all right, on the left side. And then turn on the right side. We're simulating Yeah, you FO. might as well go to the right and get that on. Okay. Oh, if you had your TPS in front of you, that's the takeoff performance uh, paperwork. It would tell you exactly what your... Uh, your V2 is, and we would set that into our uh, into our IAS. But you'll get that from your, um, Sim your brief. performance page. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we'll come back to that. Then you can go ahead and put your runway heading in. Okay, runway heading will be 160. Yeah, and you are in auto do already. Do you put in, so that's good. actually, do you go off of, I, I actually know that it's actually 163. Do you put in That's the 163? In. Okay. Yep. You put the actual runway heading. In. Okay. And then whatever your initial altitude will be. Initial altitude is going to be 12,000. Okay. There you go. Right. Correct. Okay. And then if you want to set the FO side up, you may. Um, or you can just leave it. Um, oh, as far as the ethos is concerned? Yeah. I'll leave you it. You know, the beauty of having, uh, oh, I got a HUD all accidentally. So scroll up high, go look up higher. Oh my gosh. Keep going just a little bit more. Okay. Hold on. You want me to look above the HUD? Yeah. Cause that's where you shut it off. Okay. Okay. Click right in that round area down. Right there. Down. I don't know how that got. Right there. Right, right there. there. Yep. On the hinge. You guys are a little bit on delay, so you, yeah. Gotcha. Oh, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it used to be okay, a so you, big delay, but now it's good, pretty good. Now, one of the things that's really cool is the FOs. Quite honestly, I come into a trip, into the airplane, and I get there about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes before departure i brief the flight attendants and then when i come into the cockpit the guys have got everything set up it's just so nice so honestly that's why i like to do it in here because i don't get to do it in a real airplane very mm. often mm. all this stuff it's all done for me but anyway so then you're done with that now you can go um of course your gear is down go ahead and set your auto brakes okay auto brake going to rto correct Okay, and then you can come down the center pedestal. Below below the uh, FMS? There you go, right there. Okay. No, you go oh, to your FMS oh, oh. is really what I meant. Uh, I'll go to the FMS. Okay, there we go. And you might as well, you've got your route set up. Um, you can clear that message, kind of get in the habit of clearing out your load panel state it'll always give you a message case if, all right and uh so go ahead and set up the rest of your uh Perf. all right so yeah. we're, we're cruising at uh 12,000 will it take one two zero it probably would huh yes okay 
Uh, cost index today. The range is for I I don't know. Give me a give me an average cost index on a sure. short short test flight. Sure. Short flight would probably be something like about uh, eh, go about a hundred, so you get a little speed out of it. You can go up to five hundred. Yeah, no, uh, hundred's fine. I'm I'm gonna run you, Barbara. Well, Global Sin Alliance is paying the fuel bill, so I got to be a little conservative. <laughs> yes, of those of us that are on Global Sin Alliance, we're watching you right now. Yeah, you're like, no, John, don't go four hundred. <laughs> okay, uh, reserves. Uh, reserves would be. Well, Domestic actually, we've reserve. got too much fuel in here right now, so we should probably do our fuel before we do our perf in the EFB, yeah, you think? Yeah, I agree with you. Go ahead. And okay. That's that's right. That's so in I'm going to go to performance. Uh, I'm going to do weight and balance. Go to your dispatch first. Yeah, you want to go go back to the, hit the menu button up there okay, at the top? Okay, menu, dispatch. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whoa. Okay, I forgot about there this. There you go. All right, so um, for a four, we're literally going out to the initial and then coming back. So this is very low fuel, but I still don't know how much we put in here. Uh, yeah, I'd probably put in like uh, put about thirty or try try thirty five percent, something like that. Let's see in each tank. Out. Now you're gonna need more than that. Each each of the mains hold uh, what seventy five thousand. So uh, you don't need anything in the center. That's plenty of fuel right there. For right there, around. so thirty-four percent. Yeah, you got twenty-six thousand pounds. That's and I fine. won't, I won't be landing heavy. Or is there? A, what, oh. What's the maximum no. landing weight, weight-wise? Is it? I mean, three uh, forty-four. Is it eight or a nine? This is a nine. Um, I gotta go back. Uh, <laughs> there's a placard over on the right. Should be if they did it right. It would tell what, you. What are you trying to find out? Max oh, I, I was just max landing weight. Oh. I nah, don't worry. They, they don't. They don't. Don't have worry it about it. Here. Yeah, that's fine. Don't worry about it. All right, so I'll just take this. So that the, do I do I do set fuel I think tanks? Three sixty six, but I got to look it up. Yeah, okay. set fuel tanks. Okay, and we have no passengers except for the crew and the FAA is on board, so no cargo, nothing. Right. Holy moly. <laughs> It'll be a rocket ship, is what you're saying. All right, well, we're gonna have to derate the heck out of it. All right, fine. No, I'll put in some. I'll put in some fake cargo here. All right, here we go. How's that? I don't know if it optimizes. Put a little. Put a little laugh. There you go. Just, just. Uh, it's got go a lot in the front. That seems a little bit. A little put, bit. put. Yeah, that looks a little heavy in the front. So I'm gonna put at least a passenger or two. <laughs> And I think it'll let you set the uh, payload. Okay, there's three uh, VIPs in business and three, four in economy. And I wanted, I wanted to shift this. There we go. Five thousand, one thousand, five thousand. Yeah, do that. All right, and then do the qual, the set payload. Yeah, set payload. Okay. What's cool if you have a real flight number. So, like, if you have, say, uh, Amer a, a, uh, a, I think it's AA-23, well, no, that's not operating anymore, but AA-49 is, like, I think, Paris to DFW. If, if the, it'll look on that, I th on that load agent, it'll actually pull up the data to see what they had for the weight, and it'll put oh, it in wow. there. wow. Yeah, it's that, real world. That's it's cool crazy. as heck. Yeah. Okay. All right, back to the perf. Uh, um... I'm assuming our gross weight has changed. So I do I do a perfinite request? No, I don't think. You know, see, it's blue. They don't have that feature available. Oh, maybe so it's because. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so check your zero fuel weight. Make sure it's what you have on the EF. 301.967. No. Okay, you're good no. there. Your it's weights not, are good there. It's not, it's not the same. 328 is what is listed in the perf. That's your gross, your zero fuel. Oh, zero fuel weight. You're right, 301. Yeah, sorry. Yep. Okay, so go ahead and eh, throw in, uh, go ahead and throw in, like, for this, maybe 8,000 for reserves, 10,000. So would something. it be just eight then? Eight. Yeah, okay. Yeah, eight point oh. All right. Uh, 
Uh, Kevin says 425,000 pounds, according to Google, for the for the landing max landing weight. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 way up there. I can't remember it. I have a, That's why they put it on a placard for me. I do know I want to go into my check rights though. <laughs> go yeah, ahead and execute exactly. it. All right, execute. Where, where is that placard normally in the real aircraft? You know where the flaps uh, placard is? Yes. To the left of the PFD and then to the right of the FO's PFD. So we have a we have one kind of taped up right above where the flat placards and those two switches are. Ah, uh, right. okay. So right down there, probably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, or, or over by the heater switches kind of thing. You just kind of stick it up there. So you... Gotcha. Okay. And then uh, let's go ahead and go to uh, your, uh, you can hit in it, ref. It should take you, you go to your thrust limit. That's perfect right there. And your CG is going to come off of your, uh, look at your EFB. Gotcha. 16%, 4.75. Okay. And doesn't have your V1. How the heck? Go go to your uh, performance page on uh, your EFB. He probably didn't execute the performance data. On the EFB? Go back to index, yeah. Just go back to index. Oh, oh, on the FMS. Okay, so index. All right. Performance. And go to the perf, yeah. Okay. I've got to wait for it to load in here. Hit, uh, oh, it's, well, it doesn't like your cruise altitude for one thing, but hit, hit execute. Just to see if that does anything. Because sometimes you got to execute that before it'll show up in your V speeds. Go to your thrust limit page. Yeah. Just straight up. Maybe it wants a temperature. Uh, yeah, throw in a temp. It, it should it probably, have that. It, oh, it's got V speeds now. Good. Good. Yeah, good, so good. yeah, you got to execute the yep. perf data. Yep. Yep. So take that 141 there. Okay. Okay. Go up to straight up to your flight mode panel. Your flight, uh, okay. your and MC. Bug up 141 plus something. You got it. No, you just put 141. We okay. put it the actual the, the actual number in there. It seems really slow. Just crazy. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna hit 12,000 so fast, man. It'll start. It'll <laughs> capture the altitude at about eight. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, it'll... Okay. So you got all that. You got everything into the FMC. All right. So you're all good there. Uh, you're kind of at the point now where you can do the before starting engines checklist. Okay. We would, of course, in the real world, we compare our flight plan to our paper and what our clearance is and do all of that stuff. We do a verbal, uh, check on that with each other. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So, uh, if you want to start it up, uh, get it ready for start. Uh, captain's flow is you go up to the top of the panel. Do we want to push back first before we do this part or no? Start your APU first. Do we have it okay. up yet? Nope. Let's do not. that. Let's do that. All right. So APU is, we got APU off, on, and start. Go to on. Okay, on. Now, in the real world, you kind of let it sit for about a minute uh, to ensure their doors, because they do a door the, test the first. flap open. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then just go ahead and do You can do that now. Okay. And then I guess I can probably monitor this somewhere down here. One. Go go back up there. Okay. If you don't mind. Yeah, hit status page. So go up to your... All right, since you're right there, turn on the uh, buses there, the IFE passenger seat and, and cabin, cabin utility. Okay. I forgot to have you do that before. Okay. Okay, now come back down to your, uh, to your screens there. Uh, Flight. uh, say 14 N is that how you say his name in there in chat, Twitch chat. Off scale descent is absolutely guaranteed. Real world pilot, Captain 737. All right, go ahead. Hit right there where it says MFD left, right to the left. Go to the, mm. go left with your mouth, and you see where it says system checklist CDU and all of that right there, right down below. Okay, yep, system CDU. Hit sis. Sis. 
All right, that would be APU then. All right. There you go. There, of course, it's already started up. You can see it running there. <coughs> okay, and that's good. Good APU start. Okay, so now that you got the APU up, you can tell. You know, let's pretend the ground is clear. Calling you and saying, uh, "Hey, Captain, this ground okay to take your extra?" Oh wait, let's do that. Let's just, let's do GSX. Can we do GSX with this, Mustafa? You should be able to. You should be able to. Says I need to set my parking brake. So, yeah, you need to do that. Oh yeah, we didn't do the center pedestal. That's why. Let's do that. I forgot. Okay, to center go pedestal, or, or not the. Uh, I gotta go up just a little bit because you wanted to do the parking brake as well. All right, go ahead. So yeah, you got the parking brake. You'd have your frequencies set up for ground and ramp or whatever you're using there. Mm -hmm. Okay, your fuel control switches, of course, would be off. Your stab trim switches are just like they are. Uh, you'd go ahead and set your transponder code. That's right there on the radio panel. Four, four, three, three, set. Okay. Go ahead and turn on your transponder to TARA. You do that actually at the gate, okay? That's good to know. Yes, because now most airports, almost all airports, have radar uh, um ground control yeah they want that. they want it on there Salt Lake City definitely wants yeah. it on there but there was some some discussion about going to TARA versus just having transponder on because the TARA is actually potentially sending out a radar signal for looking for traffic or but well, it's, it's or is it just advisories terrain advisories radar put advisories it on TARA uh I think that works uh we that's our procedure. We okay. put it to TARA every airport we go. Okay. Unless there is a specific do not do this. Which oh, X-Plane Pilot just said RA is actually automatically inhibited while you're on the ground, and it, and it, go, and it turns on at 80 knots. That's, that's awesome. Correct. Yeah, that's correct. You'll get the traffic, yeah. but the re you're not going to get a, uh, a uh, resolution advisory till you get Above, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so how do you oh, switch this? Yeah, that's really good to know. How do you switch this to TARA in here? So See there's the... that knob right in the middle there, but below the fire handles. Ah, right, right there. It's not in the FMS. Okay. And that middle is your ident, right? I have a, that's I correct. have an ident button on the F um, on the the radio uh, display as well. There's an mm -hmm. ident there and an ident there. Okay, good to know. And then notice too your uh, on your on your uh, radio panel there. It's got your above normal and below. Uh -huh. If you want to, uh, um, you know, see traffic higher above you than two thousand feet, you hit. I think it gives you two to nine thousand if you hit above. Same thing. On okay. That's cool. Okay, uh, the center radio we uh, generally. Um, you know, I usually, I have satellite stuff set up on that, but, you know, we're not messing with any of that here. So that's pretty much, you just check those, uh, the uh, ABS audio in normal, the OBS, the observer's audio is in normal. That's for that FAA that, guy that's sitting back there? Yes. That's for, that's for me behind you here. And Moose. Yeah. Moose, is, Moose is watching the FAA. The FAA is watching me. I think on exactly. Pilot Edge... And all I need is that red and VATSIM. All I need is that red that or that green light on, right? For pilot edge and VATSIM. Uh that's your green. That's gonna give you your audio, yeah. but you have to push the black button above it to do your microphone. Go ahead. Look at that. Okay. Yeah. There we go. There you are. Thank you. Now General. notice that the audio for the right side is on. Uh if you don't want to hear the right radio, you just select that. Uh, you push that switch, not the mic switch, but the round tower the, looking the knob, switch. Yeah, the knob switch right below. Or rotate, the, or rotate the volume the all the way down, I guess, as well. No, he's talking about on your other radio head, the, the pilot side radio head. You see how you got their left and the mic? Look two knobs over. Oh, right, right there. That's listening to whatever he's, the, the COM2 or whatever. So yeah. that's, yeah, that's ah. looking at your right radio on 27.8. Oh, okay. I'm turning that bad boy off. 
There you go. There'll, there, there'll be a want. there'll be a, a moment where I'll want to pick up an ATIS or something like that, and I'll use that. Correct. And and in the real world, if you have twenty one five, when of course we monitor twenty one five on the right yeah. radio, and that you can never shut the volume completely off. Mm. You can turn it down, but you can't shut it. It by default it comes on automatically and stays on. But okay. anyways. Okay, so you got all that done. Uh, you can go up back to any view you want, um, and do... uh, you sh you should be set to go. Do pushback. Yep. All right. Let's see what GSX complains about here. Well, he's booting up GSX. I've got a question for you. Is there? I know in most uh, cockpits, there's some kind of a visual, re and it may not be simulated, but there's usually some kind of visual reference as far as uh, aligning your eye point for the you know height of your chair and how far forward or back you should be in the in the position. Is there anything like that in the 787, or is it just you figure it out? <laughs> <laughs> yes and no. Yeah, you you do want to have your seat so that you're kind of looking down the top of the glare shield, just just so you can barely see the top of the glare shield as it angles down toward the nose. And but in reality, with the HUD the way it is, uh, you're going to have to change that position so you can see the entire HUD. And it actually puts me. A little lower in the seat than I like, and a little bit further forward than I like to be. But that, that's it. Now in the seven three, the HUD is actually better, in my opinion, um, and that that limitation doesn't exist in the seven three, but it does in the seven eight. Gotcha. So the best way to to figure it out is to use the HUD. Is your just make sure the HUD is centered. And that's probably about your correct eye point. Yeah, and it works. It works pretty well. As soon as I get airborne, um, even with the HUD, I keep the HUD down until I get to, you know, maybe 10,000, 18,000 or whatever, sometimes all the way to altitude. But uh, I will, um, as soon as I can, I will actually raise my seat up a little bit so I can see outside the airplane better. Gotcha. This is not a gate for this plane. <laughs> oh, that's cool. How are you doing that, though? Better pushback. Or, sorry, GSX. <laughs> <laughs> GSX oh, does that now. Explain, explain Freudian slip right there, gentlemen. <laughs> you heard it here. I missed it, so sorry. Yeah, no, it's uh, GSX's... Quick they've, at they've, it. They've, they've yeah, they've introduced a kind of a version, like better pushback in X-Plane uh, called Quick Edit when you get your pushback. So cool. you can actually kind of edit how they're going to push you. So you're not just okay. at their mercy anymore. Gotcha. Okay, so since we're actually pushing back, there's a few things we wanted to do before. I didn't realize it would start so quickly. Go back into your cockpit. <laughs> I wanted to see the visuals, but okay, fine. <laughs> well, we can, I'll tell you what, we can, we, <laughs> hey, it's always cool to push back with no, no hydraulic power. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, Go yeah, yeah. It, Go ahead. No, let's do this. All right. I, okay, I see so, the hydro panel. So here's, here's the flow that you actually use. So actually go back to that zoom that you just had. Okay. Go back up. Okay. Cause you're going to, okay. So you're going to arm the flight deck door. Flight deck door, I see it. Okay, emergency lights. You want emergency to close exit the, lights. You want to put those. Yep, you want to arm that. Yeah, you, okay. And you want to, uh, you want to go ahead and I, I think the emergency lights might be off. So go ahead and make sure it's click to arm. Right click it. Yep, you're right. Good yeah, eye. There you go. <laughs> now cl close the guard. Okay, good. Come down and you start always, always on a Boeing. You start from right to left and you turn on. Well, your hydraulic pump should have primary should already be on. So turn those. The primary on right and left. Okay. Yeah, those are your engine pumps. So they, and then they, electrical's they, they off. caught that on the Who's teaching this pre? <laughs> that was terrible. Well, I've been bouncing you around. It's it's the student's fault for dis, dis, you know. Yeah, no. Well, in reality, again, you don't touch those, but you do have to check them because maintenance may have shut them off mm. and, and not not turn them on. So you start with the right electric demand pump. So you go from right to the left in that half circle there, and you go auto, 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 auto. 
Okay. Uh, other other way, but you'd go right to left, not left to right. Yeah, you're the right, John. <laughs> <laughs> now, interestingly, John, you would shut them off that way, but you turn them on right to left. Okay. okay? Pat, Which is opposite of what seat. we talked about with regard to everything was going to be left to right as far as the IRS alignment. Now, this is yes, the opposite. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Now, your seatbelt sign, of course, would be on. Yep. Okay, in our checklist, we do that 10 minutes prior to departure. Okay, and then go up, back up. Uh, let's see, you're going to come over to your fuel pumps, and you're going to turn on your forward and aft, left and right. Okay. Notice how the aft left pump did not have a pressure light. That's because the APU, APU. turned it on automatically. Mm. Now, notice you have pressure, don't have pressure. That's normal, okay? You're okay with that because we'll get that when the engine starts. Then your beacon goes on. Beacon goes on. Okay. So, real quick, I'm going to stop you here for a second because I'm, I'm, I'm following you along in my 787 and, and in my sim as well. Um, I did the same thing. I turned the fuel pumps on, and my pressure lights all went out. So I'm curious why there's a difference. Are your engines already on? They are not. Uh, Sim are your, yeah, it might be. Do you have a run light on? Do you don't have your uh, your um, fuel cutoff levers that run? Uh, you know what? Maybe I do. Because if you do, that turns the pumps on. Uh, nope, they're cut off. Okay. Well. That's weird. <laughs> that's weird. Interesting. Could be, up, could be a bug or a feature. Oh, you know, well, yeah. Yeah. It's, no, it didn't change anything. Oh, no, it did. Yeah, okay, so if you disconnect, if you don't have external power, then then they, the pressure lights, it doesn't use, it load sheds because it's just using the APU. Exactly. So that's why. Got it. I Got have my it. external power and APU on. That would do it. That would do it. See, at their load shed, at the airplane's incredible. Um, anyhow. All right, so let's go down. You've been, uh, so... Uh, uh, ground to captain, you're uh, clear for both engines. Okay, clear for both engines. Right, you probably need to set your parking brake, make sure it's set. Yeah, he's been bugging me. He's also, uh, I said, hey, can you just set your parking brake, please? <laughs> I need to go to lunch. Yeah, he wants to eat. He's he's tired. <laughs> and go back on your nav display and hit your ND up there. Remember where you hit sys before? Yeah. No, on your uh, nav display. There you go. So you want to hit ND. ND. Okay. There you go. Okay. Now we're doing engine. Okay. En Unlocking gear. Now, so for 787 engine start, you start both engines at the same time, usually. Okay. Oh, really? Yep. So it's, and it's all auto. So first what you do is you turn the fuel control switches to, uh, to that's by your, by right below your throttles. Oh gosh. Okay. You've turned these to, to run the fuel control. Put that to run. Both of them? Both of them. This is so foreign. Right? It's, it's not okay. It's not using. There you go. Okay. Okay, now come back up. All right. To your uh, overhead. <clears throat> your throttles are at idle, right? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, they don't look like it. <laughs> oh, you're right. Never no, mind. You remember, <laughs> yeah, you remember how we didn't want to. Check oh, Joyce. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You remember that, yeah, student? Okay. You remember, yeah, remember that? that? We had a valuable okay. lesson here today, son. Chat. Chat. Big time lesson. Use the damn checklist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's four, but anyway. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's go on up to the overhead. All right, overhead. Both engines. All right, where do we do that? That is it's going a, to be so uh, right uh, up above the fuel jettison panel. Yeah. Okay, so and we can do both at the same time. Yep. Hit start. I'm just hitting both of them. I just want a chip. Just give me Perfect. a chip. Now come on down to your. You can watch the start. Oh, it's, yeah. Let's come down. Thing, oh yeah. Okay, so auto. So yeah, I see it. You see the auto start going. You can yeah. see your N2s coming up. 
Mm. Now, in the real world, it takes a long time before those fuel flows come on. They don't have that accurately modeled in here. Mm. I mean, these things run and run and run until they, and it does a whole bunch of checks. The, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the EECs, the electronic engine control computers. Mm -hmm. And when it's all satisfied, it turns on the fuel. Interesting. It takes a lot longer for those real engines to start. Than How long, approximately, Bob was asking? I uh, missed that. It takes a good minute, I would say, to a minute and a half. In fact, it takes so long that when they, when they, uh, if they par have me park brakes and then clear me to start, I can't give the guy the taxi signal with the taxi light because, because I can't salute him with the taxi light because I don't, it's, it's load shed until the engines are running. Mm. So uh, I actually turn the light on in the if at night in the cockpit so he can see me and I give him a, you know, traditional salute. Mm. Um, but anyway, so let's take right. a break just for a second and look at the chat here. Did we miss something here? Offscape descent says we barely, uh, we could barely get our number one engine started last night. APU bleed valve was wired closed by maintenance. Air cart barely put out the air we needed. Had to stop the first attempt to keep from having an overheat. The 787 setup would be nice. There you go. And uh, did I miss anything else? Is that why you turn the fuel to run first? I don't know well, where, what the context. That was probably related to something we well, said it's earlier it's, it's all it's all auto start and you well, can do that on the 747 too when you right when it's an auto start setup it uh, the fadec does all the when you ingest fuel so you turn them on so they're the fadec can have full control of the ec or whatever they're calling it yeah it's triple sevens exactly the same way this airplane and the triple seven are very 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 similar they tried to get the fa to do a single type rating with differences training but yeah. this airplane is so much different. You're actually not using the bleed air to start the engines. Wow. So, yeah, I was just going to ask uh, you about that because I thought that was the case. Yeah, it's using the electric the electric motors basically. Exactly start. right. It uses an air compressor, monster air compressors. Well, actually, that's for AC and pressurization, but it does use a motor electric motor to start the engines. It's really phenomenal. Mm. Uh, say. Uh, I don't know how you say your name. Say, I'll just call you Say. Say and Offskate are having a great conversation. Say is from Sweden. Welcome to the John Fly stream. Thank you for participating. Uh, 757 Spy, I, I absolutely agree with you. This is really, truly amazing. We are very fortunate. I hope I don't get a bill in the in the mail from these two gentlemen. Um, but then again, I'll pay them in snacks. Uh, do the fuel switches turn on the EEC? I think you guys just talked about that. Um, yes. Yeah. Basically, they're actually monitoring all the time, but yeah, they that that's really when they start doing their work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think all yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Well, I think we got engine start. All right. Okay, so once you got engine start, then uh pretty much <clears throat> part My job as a captain uh at this point is I usually and this is technique only, but I usually go to the systems page again and look, pull up the flight controls. Now, in the real airplane, once you start the engines, it's already going to, when you hit system, it should default. And it doesn't in here, but it should default to your flight controls. So, when I move the, when I move them, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. So, so let so me, uh, let me change my, I, I got to add in a view here because, um, I, I, we're just we're down there on that screen so much that I would I'd like a new view. So um, let's see. Let's go to no right there right there no. Oh, we can start from here. Bear with me as I create the view. This is just a one time deal. Um, I'm gonna create a new view, and we're gonna call this. Uh, we'll just call this. What would that be? MFD, or yeah, you can put in uh, Captain's MFD. Sure. Okay. I'll just put it in MFD. All right. Uh, and then, and I'm going to update the preset and then I'm going to take the camera. I'm going to move it over like this. I'm going to move it down. I'm going to change the tilt, move it down, 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 change the tilt that way. This is so much easier than in X plane, but X plane don't have this plane. So there is give and take, isn't there in this world? 
That's, that's right. That's, that's why. We, that's why the good people have both Sims and get the best of both worlds. The good people. Have... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you think... probably want to keep that uh, MF. You want to keep it, the, the MFD in panel. in the display. Yeah, keep that mode control panel up there so you can switch if you need. Okay. Sometimes I do stuff for me, and then sometimes I do it so people can read stuff easily because. I got gotcha. you. I'm wondering. I'm wondering if, yeah, I'm wondering if it, people can, like, for example, can anyone in the Twitch chat read the EGT on the APU? Maybe you can. I don't even know. I three hundred something eight. It doesn't. If I full streamed it, I can, but not okay. if I'm. Yeah. So there's a balance between what I need and the entertainment factor. <laughs> right. But I'm gonna put it there because Captain said so, and he's. <laughs> no, no, that's that's. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to assign I'm actually going to assign a key to that and that key is going to be that one hopefully I remember that one alright so back over here we're going to go four, 4 and then we go 9 to zoom in okay alright please continue so we're, we, we're, we so want to go to the flight control uh, right it's on the bottom FCTL the right there I think is what we are Okay, That's it. and then I'm just going to turn left, right, aileron. Notice your spoilers going up there. I noticed that. I noticed that. Just not all the way, but... Like... The inboards <laughs> don't. The inboards will only go up all the way. Um, on uh, If you were to take your spoiler and retract it all... Mm. In uh, that's in a ground, in uh, that's a ground function for full spoilers uh, okay. on those inboard. Okay. In uh, in response to a time time situation, I just wanted to have as much time with you as possible. I was going to skip the flight control check, but I learned the hard way that we don't skip things in this situation. <laughs> you do not. You do not. <laughs> check we but, but by the way, like I said, that's technique. The airplane's so smart that if the flight control, something doesn't work, it's going to give you an ICAST message. Mm. But we like to see the visuals because it's mm. fun. And we also check the rudders. And in the airplane, you would actually, on your tiller, mm -hmm. you would actually push down in the center of the tiller so that you don't move the steering, the nose wheel. Oh, okay. See that round button there? Yeah. You push that down and then move the t uh, your rudder pedals left and right and check your rudders. Yeah, okay. I get it. You got it. I mean, that's, you know, I don't, right. I can't remember if the, so right. you, yeah, it's not so modeled, now, but yeah. Yeah. So now so, go up and shut your APU. All right. So let's uh, turn APU to off. It, Cause the gens yeah. are automatically switched. Yep. Yep. And then you might as well turn on uh, some engine anti-ice cause I see a little snow fall. I do out. see some snow. So engine anti ice to auto or on? Uh, I we our procedures to turn them on to ensure that we have them if we have visible preset falling that adds okay. below. Uh, and you can even turn the wing on at this point, but yeah, I wouldn't. You know, let's say you got de iced and. We're, we're okay. Good. All right. All right. Is there a mic okay. but a mic button on the tiller? On the mic? tiller, no, on the control wheel there is. Yeah. Apparently there's a mic there's button on some tillers. Mic, there's, and there's also a microphone button on the uh, right next to where the clock button is to the left of the uh, left and right of the glare shield as it follows the angle down toward the sidewall. Right there. Yeah. Right, right on it. Okay. Yeah, it's a little See. switch. Oh, and oh, you can I leave it on? No, it's it's spring loaded to off. Oh, okay, okay, okay. If you if you click it though, click it, John. It'll bring up your radio panel. It's kind of cool. Right. Oh, oh, excellent. We learned that the other day. Didn't you learn that the other day from something that? Or no, it was Brad. Brad M has taught me so much about the PMDG products as well, and we just stumbled across that. Clicking on the mic, it brought up the radio panel. Maybe I learned that from you, Mustafa. Passed it on to Brad. Uh -huh. He said, "I never knew. That's awesome." It's cool I how see, I, you didn't learn from me because I just learned that just now. Oh, <laughs> like by, by clicking it and finding out that oh look that's what happens. There you go. 
<laughs> but yeah, a mic, a mic on the tiller, I think that may exist on some aircraft is why he probably is asking that question because you're in the middle of taxi and you want to be able to talk to ground if you're the radio guy. But is the FO ever uh, taxiing with, yeah, so, or is it the, uh, the, 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 the PIC on the, well, I guess, yeah, do you taxi from the right at side? some airlines, the FOs do taxi at our airline. They, they don't? That just, okay. That's just the way SOP. it's SOP, okay. Right. All right. And some planes they don't have a tiller on the on the right side. This one right. does, but yeah. Steer with my left hand tiller, right hand on the throttle. It would be nice to have a br- yeah for yeah for ramp tower ground. That makes sense. Yeah, let's let's uh let's uh let's copyright but that. Just just remember something. When you're on a straight, you're not using the tiller. I'm using my rudder pedals. It's much smoother. Mm. You have eight degrees of nose wheel steering with the pedals. Eight degrees. So. Yeah, I think it's eight, yeah. uh, six to eight, whatever it is. It could even be nine, but I, I don't memorize those numbers because they're. Um, it's enough to I, to veer uh, back and forth on sure. the on the it'll line. Sure, it'll keep yeah. you on the center line, yeah. and it'll do it a lot smoother than the tiller will. Yeah. So the only time you're really using the t- tiller is when you've got a sharp turn to make. Okay. Okay. Anyway, so. Um, done that we've got the ap let's go to flaps uh I, th- I think we're doing a flaps five take all right flaps i don't know if we set that in the perf to be yeah we well, did we, got, we did we got we did no, uh we, we got v speeds yeah yeah you okay. got v speeds all right set okay flaps five i think it defaulted to five i don't remember putting five in there but maybe I, i'm sick so i think it i think you're right i think it might have it auto filled in but you can change it yeah okay okay and uh, let's see, you can... Uh, Lights, I guess. You turn your taxi light on, and you can start taxi. Okay, taxi light is on. All right. All right, let's spool these bad boys up. And let's... Here we go. I wish it was X-Plane, because I hit the outside view from because of my X-Plane. Uh, Bob Clement... You- it, uh, we use uh, 10 degrees Celsius or below, and visible precip is when we turn on our uh, our engine anti ice on the ground. And actually, and in flight, you're in auto, so you don't have to. But if you didn't have auto, uh, that's when we turn it on 10 degrees Celsius and visible precipitation. Good question. So even if this wasn't rain, uh, snow, and it was say light rain but it's below 10 we've got the engine anti-ice mm. now you don't want to look at that status anymore i would go to your nav just put it back to nd okay nd and i'm going to stop here for a second because i absolutely need a, <clears throat> an outside view that i can go to to for my immersion so moose maybe you can help me with immersion. this so <laughs> okay what's you need? All right, so I want basically the the equivalent of an outside uh, locked spot, I guess, so I can pan around it uh-huh. with my controls, right? Okay. Right. I'm assuming that that is a P3D situation. I want to make that a chase. Uh, I want to bind that. I could just bind that in P3D, though, couldn't I? I think you can. Now, are you? This is the. This is the lock spot view from P3D, right? Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I. Yeah. So there should be a. Uh, in fact, let me let me see what the command is for it. So if I go up to maybe views, it maybe will be in there under lock spot or something. It, it probably will be. I know. Well, I know you can shift through the other ones. Let me see. Lock. Yeah. There's no lock spot. There's no spot. Okay. Yeah, you shift. You use S to shift through the views, but it it'll go through the default. Of yeah. The, the, the follow spot. So the to get spot. this equivalent to where I can pan around in chase plane to make it a, just a chase plane view, mm-hmm. um, I've noticed that when I do uh, an outside view, it doesn't have that same panability, and I guess it's dependent on. I mean, they have this. Obviously, they have the static over here, but that's not going to move with the plane. No, that's not. So click on your uh, click on your wing view, or just one of them, just for the sake of science here, real quick. Well, let me just do this one terminal, whatever that one if is. You're, yeah. Now I if I can't pan. Cause... That's right, because it's not gonna it's not centered around the plane. It's centered yeah, around it's, it's the cameras in yeah. a fixed spot. That's that's the deal. Yeah, that's right. 
F11 didn't work, Virus City. I tried it. I think I deleted it maybe at some point. What is, what's your F11 map to? Any views? Let Moose? me see. Because maybe I want to add that back, because that would probably be easier than using Chase maybe. Plane. But unless I you had a killed it too. Uh, it is selected to view camera three, whatever that means. Let me see what it does in my sim. F11. Uh. Oh yeah, it went to the lock spot view. Okay, so um, if I go up to if I go up to options, general. And I go to <clears throat> key so you're assignments. Looking for, you're looking for view camera three. And I do uh, view camera three. Select. And then I change that to... I'm just going to change that to a, fr a button. Um, do I want... I want... Yeah, I want that button. There we go. Let's try this. Sorry, Tom. This is all... <laughs> hey, no problem. It's just I'm learning, too. Um, I'm going to go back to four. Oh, oh no. I got rid of it. Something I needed. Uh, pilot is going to be... Let's assign a, key, a button. Oh, you know what? I want that there. No, I want that there. I hate... I, hate, I, I love it, but I hate it. <laughs> so the pilot captain... That one's there. Assign a button. I want button four on the joystick Hotas to be that. And then I want button three to be the other one. Okay, we're getting closer to taxi. <laughs> General. And we're going to keys. Uh, camera three. Button three. All right, so hopefully. So there's overhead. There's captain. There's an outside lock spot. I can pan, and there's back to there. Okay, thank you. Awesome, uh, Virus City, thank you. All right, continue taxi. Clear left, clear right. By the way, uh, short final designs, Salt Lake City got uh, updated to version 1.5. It's fantastic, but I'm not in that sim. Man, I keep doing that. <laughs> Look at the massive scenery that is not here. <laughs> that was like, oh, this is better pushback. Uh, n hello, mate. It's not that sim, mate. <laughs> it's not that sim, mate. This ain't your, this ain't your vat sim. This ain't your X-plane. I don't think they normally taxi down this side either. They taxi down the other side, but that's okay. Well, they do now. They do now. Tom, you still with us? Yep. Okay, I'm, cool. Uh, cool. Just thinking through a few moves ahead here. So eventually what you're going to actually, one of the things that the co-pilot would have done after engine start is he would uh, hit <clears throat> going back into the cock. You want me to go in there now? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, just get her to the hold short line. Okay. And we'll do it. Okay. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's rock and roll. Man, I haven't streamed this long in a since, long time. This is since crazy. You're right there, where your uh, MFD buttons are next to your e on your EFIS panel. Yes, sir. Hit and hit hit what? ENG. ENG. Oh, okay. Yeah, down, down one. That takes Go it off. Down. Okay. Yeah, we don't use this. The it's bottom. technique. Procedure is we 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 have it. Uh, usually off and that way if something pop something pops up it's not good we need to look at it mm. some guys like to take off with it on and that's cool too um to monitor the engines but um once you get airborne we leave it off so that if something happens low oil pressure high temperature something like mm. that high vibration it'll automatically come on and tell you okay uh, quick question. At, at idle, should it be going 30 knots? Yeah, the airplane wow. with this weight, you would be hauling butt. <laughs> so you do use a lot of brakes then. Oh, it's one of the biggest challenges in the 787 is keeping the brakes uh, cool. Cool. Mm. Because it taxis so fast. Um, now, when you're loaded down and going to Asia, not not so much. But okay. Even going to Europe, it it taxis quick. 
So they've modeled this accurately then for it to go this fast because we are light. Yeah. Yeah, that is, that's very accurate. You would get going really quickly. And you're at 4,800 or 4,000, whatever it is. 42, 4,250, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, uh, you, 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 <laughs> it's yeah. going to move, especially a season. Yeah. This, I'm having so much fun. Now you're coming up toward the end of the runway, so I, if you're familiar with the airport, I would go ahead and put in, uh, you could do this when you stop. It's kind of hard to do stuff when you're trying to taxi the sims yeah and without two people in the cockpit yep. yeah <laughs> we're definitely gonna go full length today even though we may not need it <laughs> well, you will definitely will not need it i'll tell you that you almost uh wanted me to get the pmdg please, please stop denting my wallet <laughs> i do dent a lot of wallets i do I, I admit that i apologize but this is this is the best 787 we got boys and even Tom flies it. The real world seven eight seven flies it, and he's 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 he, there, there, there's a lot to yet to be uh, optimized. Let's put it that way. But it's it's better than what we have on the other platform. All right. Okay, so go ahead and set your brakes, uh, or you could just hold them with your All right. feet. Whatever. Brake set. All right. And let's go ahead and. Um, one of the things we would have done on pre-flight, but I actually, I don't do it there. I do it right here because I want to have the full screen so I can taxi with the map. But at this point in time, uh, what I would probably, what, what you should do is you're going to want to go see where your nav display is. And it says map, plan, and menu. Uh huh. Well, one of the nice things in in the quality wing 787 is you can click on menu with your mouse you can't do that you can't these aren't touch screens in the airplane okay but so go ahead and hit menu mm -hmm. turn your vsd on vsd on vertical situation situation display, display. It's your terrain terrain would be t-e-r-r -R. And uh, and then I usually turn my traffic on, and I like to always know where my airports are. Now, if the sim shows you every single airport that's out there, then it really gets cluttered. In the real airplane, it'll only show us airports that, that you are, can land at. That, yeah, that are over six. I think it's six thousand feet around. Okay. In the seven three, it's five thousand feet. Okay. Uh, uh, the question in the chat was, how are the flight characteristics in the sim? I think you said they're off. They're off, uh, a bit on, they're especially not, on approach. I think yeah, you were talking about. Yeah. If you're in turbulent weather, not at all like the real airplane. Um, in pretty static weather, pretty uh, it's not too bad. Um, but the re you know no 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 simulator especially one without motion is going to be able to really give you a really good flight characteristics in my seat of your pants you get that that sixth sense through your fingertips to the control column okay so you're kind of done click that menu thing again there to get rid of that that screen that in the real airplane by the way that'll after uh, i think it's 30 seconds or 60 seconds it'll disappear automatically okay And if you want the small screen, you can leave it there, but you need to ring your scale out to whatever you want. All right, scale range coming out. Yeah, you definitely don't want to take off at uh, 0. 0.25. Yeah, I like <laughs> I like 10. Ooh, I like the terrain radar. So that's 20 you got right there. It's 10 in the middle. 10. See where it says on extra track, TRK, it says uh, Okay, 20, so I should probably 20. take that back to 10 maybe. And there's 5. I don't know. There what do you have it on when you're taking off? Five or ten. I'm usually I'm usually at ten to twenty. Ten depends to... on the area that I'm taking off in. Okay. I'm not one of these guys where I do everything always this way except checklists. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Because because those are really important. But you know I'm every gonna... situation is is different. Yeah. I'm gonna turn airports off just because there's a ton of them there. Yeah. Yeah. Turn them off. And the other thing is, is I can't really, I don't see my waypoints. Oh, yeah, they're out there. 
I guess they're I don't have too many because this is a vector departure. So, oh wait, they're there. Yeah, they're there. But they're going the other, the opposite direction. Well, you're going. Oh south. wait, wait, you're it's it's, it's track is north. Up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yep, yeah, I got you. Never mind. I was so used to north up. I guess you could probably switch it to north up, huh? By the uh, way, I don't think so. No. Okay. Uh-uh. Uh. Uh. Yeah, plan in plan mode, it'll probably show you north up, but plan in will show you north it's up. You're right. Like uh, okay. Okay. Airplane, all right. So. All right. Sounds good. All right. Uh, all the, by the way, John, just on that note, he was talking about the airports in your um, info uh, by the FMC and going into your startup section. That's where you can change uh, the minimum runway length for the airports for it to show. By oh, default, look at I that. It shows 6,300. So feet. like APP config or? No, uh, so if you go to info. Uh, yeah, I'm, at, I'm on info. Oh, and then go to quality wing config. Quality wing config. Minimum runway length. It does have 6,300, but mine's showing so, more airports than that. Maybe it's not. Maybe it, maybe, in. maybe it was showing other things. Maybe I'm. Maybe yeah, it might have been showing like VORs or or waypoints or something for a bit. I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna line up and wait. Is that okay, Captain? Sure. Go to your overhead panel. Okay. Overhead panel. Overhead panel. I'm going to stop. I'm nervous now. Overhead panel. <laughs> oh, that's cool. You can do that view. You want me to turn on some lights? Did I lose you? Sorry, I didn't push the push to talk, man. Oh. I'm sorry. You you can go Vox if you want to. I uh, No, this is fine. So uh, for line up and wait, we turn the wing light on, the taxi light on, and the runway turnoff lights on. That's our procedures. Okay, so landing lights on. No, the taxi light, not the landing lights. That'll not the be landing light. Take off. Yeah, we we leave those for uh, when we're cleared for takeoff. So wing right, light. Sorry. Uh, so okay, okay, wing light, runway turnoff on. Yep. You got it. All right. And you there don't. There you go. And then you put the landing lights on if after clearance. I guess. After we get clear for takeoff, we turn on the strobes and the text and the take uh, the landing lights. Okay. It's four lights and then four lights. I like it. I should be looking to see if the, even though the tower said line up and wait, you should always look. Of course. One last thing we didn't do, which is very very important. If we had done it before start checklist, we would have caught it. Turn on your arm, your L nav, and your V nav. Very important. Okay. I'm just gonna set my parking brake, and we're gonna arm the L nav and the V nav. And then I'm gonna let's just for for uh, just you know what I think I need a light view camera too. So stand by as I tweak this plane. I used to have a light view, I thought. So I'm gonna do a new one, and this one's gonna be called lights. Everyone's like, John, quit with the chase plane. We want to learn from the master. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go uh, zoom in, and I'm gonna zoom uh, forward, and I'm just gonna go like right there, just so I can see this lower portion. And I'm gonna go to lights. And I'm gonna assign update the preset. I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna assign a key. That's going to be three. Now I can go. Uh, I can go eight for overhead, four for that, three for that. Yeah, baby. Okay. All right. So three there. So lights coming on. You Bring said your skip. Taxi light off, strobe yep. on. And. No, you'd leave your taxi light on. We'd leave really? them all on. Takeoff. Get yeah. that, boys. There's so many of us simmers that turn that taxi light off. That light we, goes off as soon as the gear is retreated. We teach each other bad habits. It's confirmed. <laughs> okay, now your scale's way out at 160 miles, so you might want to bring that down. That was a test. You passed. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs>
I will say this as this is a simism now. Yeah. Uh, with regard to the taxi light, the lighting in the seven eight seven, I've noticed. For however, they've done it with their dynamic lighting or whatever it is. When and it may not show itself now because you're in daytime, but at night when the landing lights are on and the taxi light is on, everything full bright. Uh, you will notice a severe drop in your frames. And you can save yourself a good amount of frames by just flipping off that taxi light. So while it is standard to keep the taxi light off, the light on rather on yeah, takeoff, makes... it might save your butt on frames. Ooh, that's so, a good, nice no. tip. That's, so that's FYI, yeah. And the flight dynamics will be a specific to this plane uh, because of the way they did their lighting for whatever reason. Okay. Okay. Uh, John, one last thing. You notice you on the stabilizer trim. I thought you were about to ask uh -huh. me if I was insured, but all right, go ahead. Yeah, I hope so. But uh, on the stab, Sta stab trim, on the stab trim there. Okay. So we're at four seven five. We should be at four two five. You should always see. Now you're not going to do it oh, there. Oh you're oh do it I'm on... so used to doing it there. I can just do it there. Yeah. All right. You have so your trim right. There yeah. you go. Come back. There you go. Let me let me zoom into that for a moment. Um. So what he's talking about, boys, is right there on the stab trim. Um, there we go. I can manipulate it, but it doesn't look like. Oh yeah, it just takes a little while. It's and they modeled this beautifully. It's really slow. Oh, so I have to wait before get to four point five before I can get it to four seven five. At as when you as you're holding the the, the there trim it goes. Okay. switch, it's what you want to do is. 0.25 prior to whatever it is is when you release it and then you'll be at the right one. Now it should turn green. It should be green. That little force amber or that magenta the one on top? 475, that ought to be green. But it doesn't go? I don't know why it's not, but it should be. Oh, even Take in the 5 it, just for grins. In your sim, it does go green? Uh, I don't know. I, I can't remember. What about you, Moose? Um, I... Let me set it real quick. I, I hit a button and reset everything, but let me check. I've never noticed if it went green or not, but I will check. Stand by. Are you insured by survival? I can't take that flight. <laughs> oh, you guys are having a good conversation over there in chat. You seven five seven spices. You realize we will make light of light of you. Quote. Um, yeah, let's take. I would, I'll take it up I to would five. Hope so, or I wouldn't be a real pilot. There's five. It's still not green. All right, go back. Go back to your four point seven five. Yeah, go to your four seven five. They haven't modeled that yet. Okay. No big whoop. But those two should match. Is the whole point. Yeah, mine doesn't turn green either. Mine stays magenta. Okay. Quick question: Would I have my wing? I have my wing light on to check for ice, right? Can you actually see the wing from from the from this side? No, you I was can't. gonna say you can't. By the way, go ahead and hit auto on your engine anti ice because at this point in time, uh, it's gonna turn on anyway. Okay, wing. especially when you get airborne. All yeah, right, there we you're go. You're done with you're done with all that. So yeah, you you look good. You got L nav, V nav, toga toga. Yeah, buddy, you're ready. So. Toga, toga. Exactly. Before I go, it's all like yeah. City Towers just told me to to wait. They want me to bring up. Well, they don't. They don't want me to bring up. They told me there's puppies on the runway, and they said stand by, and so I'm standing by because I need. I'm gonna pull up the uh, the <laughs> chart. The 